ready? Yep. Welcome back, Tau Fleeter folks. Jeff, Officer Greg, and special walk-on guest, <laughs> the regular. You've been asking for him in the same video, all, all in right. the same spot, Danny and the OG. Yeah, see, we aren't the same person. Aren't the same person. <laughs> so we're out here. This is not a holograph. This is not uh, computer graphics. We're in the same spot. And today, you saw Jeff build these things the other day on the last video, the 50 grains uh, LBC. So I'm build those. If you didn't, push pause right now. Go back and watch that video because you're going to like this a lot more. We're going to get it sighted in, however, with a 30 grain, 30 grains of long shot underneath that LBC. We're going to shoot a variety of targets. You've given us a bunch of uh, different targets that you'd like to see shot out here, including the world famous lead plate. We're going to fire that for you today. Let's get to it. Okay, water jug test. On the black dot. That thing zipped. While everything looked good in real time, we could see here we had a mechanical failure between the wadding and the slug. They came apart. Now despite that, somehow the slug remained stabilized, flying straight through the air, and it was relatively accurate still. But that's not how it's supposed to work. The red plastic wadding is supposed to stay attached to the lead slug and act as a stabilizer. This is probably more important in subsonic speeds than it is at supersonic speeds. Chilling with the LBC. <laughs> 50 grains, prepare for punishment. <laughs> Great, the punisher. <laughs> the pun it punishes the shooter and the target. Okay, I am ready. Here we go. Ho oh, oh. ho! Oh, that was definitely bigger. Yeah. You know that had some recoil, but not the worst of felt out here. Good, good. I was kind of worried for you, man. It's like that was twenty-five percent more than a standard slug. But okay. Not too bad. Here we go. With our heavy fifty grain load, this is how the slug is supposed to work, all staying in one piece. It's important to note here that. The point of impact with this shot and the first shot were almost in the exact same spot. Now let's compare the speeds between the 30 grain and the 50 grain. The 30 grain is probably traveling around 1300 feet per second according to load data and our 50 grain is supposed to be flying around 2000 feet per second. Not only does the 50 grain leave that 30 grain load in the dust, the impact is significantly heavier with our 50 grain monster load. Let's continue. Okay, we got Danny shooting this time. Let's see how he what he thinks of the recoil and and a, and a gallon of ice. We had a lot of suggestions for ice. All right, another LBC Sabo. Yes, sir. I'm ready whenever you are. Oh, that thing blew up. That shattered. All right. How would you like that recoil? That's not bad. It wasn't too it, punishing. It's good and stout. Oh, oh, oh. That thing blew up. That shattered. Once again, we have another textbook flight. Even with a different shooter, a completely different shooter, the point of impact is nearly identical as the first two shots. The red dot on Greg's shotgun is calibrated for foster slugs and not these. Since they're all going to the left, you're going to try to... Maybe compensate, compensate a little bit. You have to compensate over the age of 40. <laughs> right on the green square, ready? Yep. Oh. Yep. So we thought that thing was gonna dive right through here, but it just made a gigantic lead crater. Nice job, lead hole. And we found this, came racking, uh, ricocheting back at us. Almost. Wanted to push through, but not quite yet. Well, at this point, Greg started bringing his point of aim over just slightly to the right to compensate for these slugs that have a tendency to fly to the left. But if anything, we're seeing very consistent and tight grouping with these slugs, and they are known for their accuracy. The surprise to me it was that this slug did not penetrate this lead plate traveling at this high velocity. You can hit Dunyan Law Firm guy. Looks like nothing fancy going to church. <laughs> Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh. Wow. Look at that. Yeah, that was a good one. What the heck happened to it? 
Oh. Now, if you watch our other videos where we use wet magazines as a ballistic medium, you'll know that, like a foster slug, will just barely make it through these magazines. Buckshot will stop in like two inches of it, but our LBC Sabo passed right through it and kept going. So this is what we found downrange. Look at this devastating damage here. This is the front of the front of the magazine. What's left of it? Right through there. <laughs> thing exploded like uh, Matt Lauer's reputation. Oh! Look at that. It almost seems like the hole is getting deeper and bigger as it goes through. Plowed right That's a through. good slug, man. And look at that exit wound. Wow. Let me so zoom those in of you who are looking for a home defense round, you just found it. <laughs> as long as you live out uh, 30 miles from your neighbors. You got a really big home. And have a steel lined house. <laughs> yeah. That. Is impressive. I don't think we can reuse that. No, this is. Uh, <laughs> I'll take these down to the doctor's office and set them on the table. <laughs> you're hitting so high, the angle's so low. I think you're gonna dent the hell of it, out of it and throw that plate off the table. Uh, well, that's, yeah, that's the plate's gonna saying, go. It's gonna land about in the water. <laughs> gonna flip it off that brick. All it's right, then I'm gonna put. I'll put. Uh, I'll put my money on through and through. It's stainless I, steel. Yeah. Yeah. It might go through. You know, like a 44 Magnum will go through it. The 460 went through it. So 2,000 We've, feet per second. Yeah, this is going through. Yeah. That's my bet. Okay, I'm ready. All right. On the green triangle. Here we go. I see a hole. I saw daylight yeah. through that thing. Really? When it was flying, you could there's see some, the... There's some protrusion sticking... <laughs> Okay, well thing. you won. Punched right through there. Nice hot little hole and check out that cool little uh, little porthole flap there. Mud, mud flap. Yep. <laughs> we almost knocked that thing off and made a quarter that we could put what, in there. What's this little hole from? That is from that 460 video. If you've not seen the 460 video, put it on pause, go back and watch. Because a handgun around punched through that steel plate too. <laughs> look at that thing. Get a little finger rest. <laughs> I see. It's like the poop on a balcony. <laughs> But anyway, that thing, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Once again, the slug impacts a little bit left to the point of aim. I'm not exactly sure in this shot where Greg was aiming, but uh, it definitely had enough velocity to go through this stainless steel plate. And honestly, that's difficult for a big, fat lead slug to do. And sent that plate flying as you saw in the in the uh, slow mo. Let's let's shoot it with a foster slug just to show the difference. Let's do that. Are you, you going to hold it this time like this? I trust you. Yeah, I'll do that. No. <laughs> you trust my aim? Yeah. All right. Let's get another green uh, triangle up there. Okay. Many viewers have asked us to compare various slugs with a common foster slug. So here you go. All right. Your standard Walmart Federal foster slug. 1610 feet per second. What a punk around. Yeah, but they're on sale at Walmart though. $10 for 15 of them. Right next to the Christmas trees in August. <laughs> yes. Okay, I am ready. Here we go. Still just flung that thing. That was the recoil on that compared. Hit like a Volkswagen Beetle. Slightly less. Oh, okay. <laughs> Standard foster slug, LBC. So, hit like a Buick, hit like a Volkswagen Beetle. <laughs> but look, chip that paint off of there, left a little bit of lead residue in there, if you can oh, see. Wow. Ooh. Nice bulge. Well. <laughs> yeah. Let's not be looking at my bulge there, meat gazer. <laughs> but, pretty impressive little dent for a standard slug. Yeah, a good price, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're what a dollar around. Less than that, if fifteen for ten dollars. Well, boom, still of those, of those. Still a TFM favorite uh, for if you had to go down and grab any old everyday slug to defend yourself with. It's it's hard to beat a beat it, but yeah, for the price. If you reload yourself, you want you need a lot of power then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bovine defecation, yeah. The rotary oscillator, if, that big one's the one you want. If you're stopping, uh, if you're trying to stop a DeLorean that's made out of stainless steel like this plate, <laughs> that's the one you want there. <laughs> and I think these slugs, um, I think the, the slug itself is 70 cents, the shell is 17 on, on cents. This? 
on this? Oh. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's 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 probably getting close to a dollar a shell, but you have a lot more performance, and you have the satisfaction of of having built your own. Exactly. Yeah. It's 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 kind of fun to sit there and weigh things out. Right. Some of us say not satisfaction, but aggravation. <laughs> I don't have time for building my own stuff, and it would explode in my face. <laughs> and you'll notice that the point of impact is very close to the point of aim because that's how Greg sighted in his shotgun at 50 yards using foster slugs. Now, it's really interesting how the lead slug just came to a dead stop, and there's absolutely no ricochet. Now, let's visually compare the velocities between these two slugs. And remember, the foster slug is ready for 16, 10 feet per second give or take, you know, probably 50 feet per second. And our LBC Sabo is loaded to fire at 2,000 feet per second, according to load data. Now, the biggest problem with trying to chronograph a shotgun slug is that you often have multiple projectiles at once in the air, and these will give you false readings. They can actually strike the chronograph and destroy it. But I realize a lot of viewers can't sleep at night because they don't know if the slug is going 1950 or 2005 feet per second. So thickness of three bricks, actually a fourth one if we get down that low, but uh, that's pretty stout right there. We're going to fire that OBC and see if it can make it all the way through this. We predict it's probably going to shatter all those. We have set them at an angle so we don't get showered with as much junk. <laughs> brick poo. It's, it's actually brick that they're made out of cement, concrete or whatever. Yeah, so I was like, that I tasted one earlier and it tasted exactly like that. So anyway, <laughs> I, real, my, my, I tasted it and it tastes like asbestos. <laughs> authentic brick right there. So <laughs> if you're living in the UK where all your houses are made out of brick, there you go. See what it'll we'll do. See if it's a good home defense round. <laughs> home defense round. <laughs> in England. I'm gonna try to go down a little low so we may, might get the fourth brick in. Oh, okay. And hopefully we'll see some. Uh, rocketing upward momentum. You should see a lot of something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of something. Matt, close your eyes Things on this one. Stuff. Okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go. Oh, boy. We got at least one that survived. Yeah. Oh, boy. So, we slammed through brick one and brick two. Pulverized them. Brick three survived to live another day, though. And you can see inside here the gold chunks that Jeff makes his bricks out of because of all those YouTube millions. <laughs> yes. But uh, brick shards everywhere all the time. Oh, my. This was our support brick, which was not hit. I thought it would break all three, man. Here's what, is what is that? What is that? interesting I found. This came out of the lead plate. This was that uh, slug plowing into the lead plate. And this is what we got a little yeah, we got nipple a little on there. Well, I mean, tail. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Be careful. These days, everybody's getting fired for harassment. Yeah, yeah. Great sex panic of 2017. Yeah. But just don't assume it's gender. Yeah, don't. Well, it's male or female. You just never know. <laughs> but that little point's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's who knows how that formed. That you little know, Rupert's drop or something. <laughs> well, I'm sure plenty of people tell you how that's formed. Stand, oh, yeah, yeah, stand yeah. by in the comments. Oh section. my, oh, yes. yes. <laughs> now, after we saw the wadding and slug separation on the first shot, boom! There it is again. And some viewers may think that's not a big deal. You're hitting the target at this range, which is not very far. We're only shooting at about 15 yards. The point of this video is not to show the long range accuracy, just the short range brute power of these very heavy 50 grain loads. Now we fired seven of these LBC Sabos today. And out of those seven, two of them failed. That's a pretty high failure rate. Maybe the company needs to add a little adhesive between the wadding and the slug. I don't know. But something needs to be done to, you know, increase the reliability of these things. Because I would imagine most people that are shooting these may not even be aware that they're having wadding separation. And stuff like that's going to really affect the longer range accuracy. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and rating it. See you next time. Thank you.